Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today a real-time tutorial on uh, some cards I created last month for my in-person card class. I don't have any extras, but this is something you can do almost anything with a set like this with. So if you have florals, dyes, and the stencils, this is kind of what we did. We actually did one without the, well, we didn't. We used the stencil, but we really didn't need to use the stencil. And today I'll probably switch it up a little bit. I'll show you what we did, but it's definitely, you don't need the stencils to do it that way. So I picked up Tailored Expressions Daisy Dreams back, I think it was by Thanksgiving time, they had stuff on sale and on clearance. So this is, I don't do a lot of florals and I thought this would be fun. I know it's something that's big in the crafting industry is those multi-layered stencils and stamp combo sets and so I wanted to try it with my students and give them you know that ex that whole I don't know experience I had fun with it it was it was fun there's definitely more options available to do so with that being said if you want to craft along with me this is gonna go really fast because I have everything already cut and ready to go. But you would need a floral of some sort. Um, if you have the dies, that helps. If not, that's okay too. You can definitely hand cut or use a brother scan and cut to work with it as well. And then if you have the layering dies, it works, makes coloring those images really quick and easy. But if you don't, we I'll, I'll, we did some watercoloring and we wouldn't have needed to do any stenciling on it to get that watercolor look to start with. I'm going to set these off to the side here. And so for my class, we I just have a set of 12 inks times whatever for every student. Like I think I have five, five sets that are just like this. I do bring in some of my big ones when I need to or some of my personal ones when I need to. But lumberjack plaid was the color that we ended up bringing in for this one so a red of some sort or whatever color you can stick with the purples and the blues i like to switch it up once in a while and let's see what else did we bring in we brought in i think this one is let's see here mixed media number one i do believe so i just took this one and cut it cut a piece of vellum with it. We are going to use this as an overlay later on. And it you definitely don't need to do it. It didn't need it. It was just an added. These were definitely mixed media style cards. I also cut out one extra mask from just a piece of scratch paper for one of my overlays. Well, it's not really an overlay. We don't actually use it we use it as a mask and so that's why I did it on super thin paper so I have that there we also brought in Tim Holtz's lattice I think this is the lattice die or basket weave looking die so it has that depth and that dimension we left it white I might do some splatter on this one but that's you know one that we used above and beyond that everything that I watercolor on today is going to be with Canson XL watercolor paper and we ink blended on Ohuhu, I think we did Ohuhu, Ohuhu marker paper, I think, or some cheaper smooth white cardstock. Nina Classic Crest would work, Bristol Smooth would work, any of those types of things would work. Let's see if there's anything else I can think of that we needed. I did do all of my, I usually stamp all of you know some of the harder things out for class just to save time because we try to get all of it crammed into two hours so I did stamp and so I did stamp all of the sentiments out with some VersaFine blunt onyx black ink and then clear coated them in some clear embossing powder and ran them through the die cut machine so they had options I did do some in gold as well and those turned out really pretty too and then we just used gold splatter if you chose to use gold sentiments we did gold splatter so to start I'm going to set this one off to the side we're actually going to start on the parts that need water coloring so for my water coloring today i am using some brutus monroe aqua pigments so blue violet and then i pulled out delphinium if i said it wrong i'm sorry but it's a sparkly blue it's not the one we use for class but it's it was blue i can't remember exactly which one we used i think we used 
at least a darker one for class than I did in my original samples. So for this one is my original sample and this one is, I think, this one might, yes, this one's my original sample and this one was my class one. Of course, I switched it up just a little bit in class because I don't always remember what I did to get this one to look like this one. But it's, you know, that's kind of the fun in making multiples. You can switch them up sometimes. So we're going to work on that background piece here. Keep in mind that I'm doing a vellum overlay on this one just because it adds interest and it also gives me a diagonal line to put that flower on later on. And so I liked that option. So we're going to start with this one, just doing the water coloring on it. Let me grab. Here is my piece of cardstock. So this is just watercolor cardstock. Nothing, you know, it's Canson XL. I think this one's Canson. This one might not be Canson XL. This one might just be whatever cheap watercolor paper I had um, on hand. I know the other one is Canson XL because it's a little bit more, I don't want to say extra, but I want it to, to be smooth and this one's rougher so the texture I was fine with this one and I think this one you can flip it over this one might even be Ranger watercolor paper I'm not positive so the one Brutusman Row aqua pigment kind of has a shimmer and shine to it I did not end up shaking it so how much shimmer and shine we're gonna get in this one is kind of you know it's I'm not worried one way or the other. If we get some shimmer and shine, oh, here we go. See, yeah, you definitely tell I shook it this time. And I'm getting some of that mega speckly fleckly. So you can either use a sprayer to water it down. I don't want it to be super bright. I kind of want it to be a little bit more mellow because I want my flowers to be a little bit more mellow. And so I'm going to add a little bit of water to it and go from that way. The other thing you can do is give your piece of paper, a little bit of a spray. You don't want to over wet it because it's going to take forever to dry and we don't want to take all of that time <laughs> for it to dry. So I'm going to just kind of come in here and I want to do blue towards the top just because I kind of want it to be like the sky. And so I kind of figured blue towards the top maybe would be a little bit better than that. And I'm just going to slowly bring it down. I don't want to go overly too far down with it a little over half and it's fairly watered down the further down i get the further watered out it can be this one goes really fast with a larger this is about an inch i'd say about an inch flat brush you can definitely go with a smaller brush it's just going to take a little bit more time and you know you it, and then we're going to go with the purple so i'm going to go start at the bottom and i'm going to slowly work my way up and this will give it that gorgeous watercolor wash I guess that's kind of what we're doing it's just a watercolor wash so you get your blue your mix of blue and purple and then your purple on the bottom and of course my finger marks it's all right it's gonna get it's it's watercolor it's not a big deal right I'm gonna pop just a little bit onto my glass mat of just solid color. This is what I did in my original one. And I'm just going to take these two. You wouldn't need aqua pigments. You could use dry water color for this. You can use distress paint for the or distress ink for it and just water it down and do it that way. So I want to add just a little bit of splatter. It'll kind of help, I don't know, mute, bring some of those a little bit more vibrant maybe add a little more color to some spots that you know just it just gives it a little bit more interest not not that you're going to see a lot of it it's mainly just because i like having fun and splatter is fun so and this way i can add a little bit of that purple speckly flecklies to the top and more blue speckly flecklies to the bottom i think i want a little bit more of the blue The best part about mixed media stuff is that you get to do, you know, you just get to play with all of those supplies. So if you're like me and you have a lot of different supplies, I have lots of watercolor, I have lots of inks. It's just, you know, I collect pretty things.
It's my story and I'm sticking to it. The other thing you could do is mica spray stains to get those sparkly, speckly, flecklies. And then we're just going to set this one off to dry. We don't need it right now. That's why we start with the things that we want to dry first. And we kind of work from there. Let's see here. I can't pull that sheet off the window. I need to grab a new, a new flower cloth towel because I hung mine up as kind of a makeshift curtain for the sun. Because when it gets the afternoon lately, it's just been right here and it drives me nuts. So I'm gonna clean my work surface a little bit, rinse out my brushes. Pretty good here. I should be done with the big one. We'll set him off to the side. And I'm gonna hold on to the little one yet. So for this one, this is the one that I have a red background for. So I'm just doing a red mat on my piece of paper. So this one is Canson XL. I stamped with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. I did use the Tailored Expression Powder Tool first to treat it. And then of course, I did clear embossing powder over the top and heat set that. This way it gives you little ink wells to color with. Where did I sit? All right. So for class, we actually went, because they hadn't stenciled before, and I like to get them beautiful cards. You know, I like to make them make beautiful cards. And so to help with that, doing the stenciling over the top of this one kind of helped them to figure out how maybe they needed the pressure and how they were going to stencil so their other ones turned out well. Does that make sense? I don't know. It worked in class. It kind of gave them a feel for the blending brush and the stencil lining up and this one because we're going to go back with watercolor and do some watercolor stuff we could definitely, not that they were all spot on but they all turned out beautiful in the end anyways with all of them so just I just kind of did some, we just did ink blending and then we're going to, we came back in and did the watercolor after the fact. But today, because I don't need to have the stencil for this one, I'm going to do it, you know, just watercolor. But we did it each stencil. So we did all three sets. It gave them a little bit of experience with doing the little the little bit of stenciling that they got to do on top of them. Of course, it also meant I had to wash everything off in between for the red, but it was all good, right? So for this one, I'm just gonna come in, and you could totally do the stencil with this one and not add the water at all and just kind of, you know, make it the red. And then you won't need to do that outline heat embossed and you can definitely do alcohol inks with this if you would prefer if you don't have the stencil and you don't you're not comfortable with watercolor but this one was just fun to do something different with watercolor I haven't done and you know distress inks are very water reactive so I said I'll, you know they could have just gone with the water mister bottle and just misted it and it probably would have turned out just as amazing And I'm not too worried if I go out of the lines. It's, you know, watercolor tends to be a looser medium and it's pretty when it's done. Like, even if I don't like it, it's always usually pretty when I'm done. So I will come in and hit these. Those were like the only, I don't understand why they didn't have those on the original stencil. It was weird. <laughs> Can I say it was weird? To me, it was weird. Maybe it, they're supposed to be green. I don't know. What do you think? Are those little bud is that little bud supposed to be green? It's on, I think it's on the little center stencil. And so it was just kind of odd to me that it wasn't on this one because it's not like there wasn't room on that one for it. So I'm just gonna add water to my last one here. And the nice thing about those ink wells or those kind of borders, that raised border, is you can go on to your next color and not have to wait 
for it to dry. I want to go with a little heavier red handed here. And of course, because it's watercolor, well, it's okay, it's distressing watercolor, right? So if I get a little bit out of the line and I want to fix it, I can go in with a dry towel and some clean what? Some clean water and do and kind of add more water to it, fade it out, and then pick it up with that dry towel or napkin, Kleenex to kind of seep up that color and it will give you a muted effect. And then by the time we're done, you won't even notice it because it'll be, you know, it'll be done and gone. So for this one, I think I'm going to go with the evergreen bow for my green. It's just a more vibrant green than the forest moss that's in my kit. And do I want to do scattered straw or antique linen? I think we're going to do antique linen for... Uh, well, we could do brown centers too, can't we? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to do antique linen, but I'm going to put just a teeny tiny bit of vintage photo there, just in case I change my mind. It's been known to happen a time or two. So I'm going to start with my yellow. Just laying down a first layer, I'm going to try to push more of the concentrated color into the spot of the image that kind of has those dots. I feel that's like your natural, you know, it, it kind of guides your shadow. That to me would be your spot that would be, I don't know, probably darker on your image when you're coloring. Let's see. And then this one. I kind of like them with that antique linen. I don't know if I need to do any brown on that. I don't think so. Okay. And then I'm going to do, come in with that green to do my leaves. Mm -hmm. Oop, I picked up some red. It's all right. It's just going to give me... little color variation. We're all good. So what has everyone been up to? I just got back from vacation last... what what day is it? Last week. So me, I've been trying to, I was, I was tired when I got back. I don't know why, because we slept a lot on vacation and we didn't have responsibilities. But then I get back and I don't sleep. It's weird. Probably because I know I have 5,000, you know, okay. I can't say 5,000 because my husband says I say it all the time. I have a lot of things that I want to get done at home and I don't always get them done. And then I can't sleep because I feel like I should have gotten more done. It's inevitable. All right, so we'll, and you can go in darker, heavier handed if you so choose. You can go in with a second layer if you want. I like to move my paper around so I'm not dragging my hand or arm over wet areas. Does that make sense? I just, less likely for me to smear and smudge stuff. It's kind of, yeah, I know myself too well, right? So, there we go. For the most part, I think we're good. This one kind of, it's funny how sometimes that color like runs and sticks in different spots better. This one's really red, so I'm going to just drop this one down here. But there we go. So, there is that one. And then we'll set this one off to dry because it's, you know, it's going to have a little bit of dry time with that other one. The other one's already dry, to be honest. So it's, they go pretty fast. Maybe it's because it's winter and it's super dry. 
in my house, and so therefore it doesn't take very long. I had a rummy. Okay, so if you want to clean your stencils between colors, rubbing alcohol wipes are the way to go. I use, so we get alcohol wipes on the farm frequently for different things. They come with different things. And then, but we usually use a pull style because it doesn't need to be sterile, sterile like wipes can be. And so we get bigger ones, which just makes. I bring them home and use them in my craft stash because they just work really well. But, you know, rubbing alcohol in the spray bottle would work just as well too. And you have zero to no dry time with these, which really helps. Now, on my stencils, you'll see the tea on the top. If you're like, what in the world is there tea on the top for? That just means it's the top corner and all of them are going to line up. Most of them have the tailored expressions thing down in the bottom and the little, but it's, you know, when you're working in a darker room or you're not paying that close of attention because you're busy gabbing with the ladies, it's just easier to have that big black tea on top. And it's just a permanent marker. It will come off if you get it, hit it with that rubbing alcohol. So I try not to hit it with the rubbing alcohol, but you can always easily replace it. So for my blues, what my background? Well, it's really a lighter blue, but I guess I have prize ribbon, but that's almost too dark. I'll just go with these. So we're using Stormy Sky and Shaded Lilac for my blues here. Is this one Shaded Lilac and Stormy Sky? Okay, so I'm going to go with one here and do... So once I have this lined up, it's pretty close. If you're not exactly on, you are going to get a white halo line where you don't want it. So try to make sure it's lined up properly. But if not, it's really not, you know, they're mixed media cards. So it's not, you know, you can always try, try again. These ones are just stamped on, I'm going to say it's accent or it's, it's the Uhuhu marker paper or something similar. Nina Classic Crest Solar White Super Smooth, possibly, because I don't like markering on that one, is also a possibility. And I'm just going to add my blue color onto my daisies. And you could totally do like a light blue just in the center to make a white daisy with just a little pop of color in there. But you don't have to. So that's my blue one. I'll probably do the other one right away here. Just to kind of save time. So I stamped these out. And then die cut them. And then I inset them. And put double. Or I want to say it's a mint tape. From scrapbook.com on, on the back. To hold them in place. It just makes coloring them easier. Keep in mind that you can totally just do stamp color and then die cut them but yes for class i tend to do it already die cut out because otherwise it takes takes me forever and so i try to do it the other way so this one i kind of want to concentrate the blue in the center here because i want to do kind of like a two-tone look and I'll lift it. So if you're gonna do a white one, you could definitely use a smaller, I would use a smaller blending brush and then just kind of hit that middle part and then the outside will be a lighter and you'll get that lighter. But that's gorgeous just as is. But I wanna do a two-tone look on this one. So I'm gonna come in with that purple lilac. Line my stencil back up and you can totally use your make art station for this one and some magnets. I don't tend to use magnets just because I tend to be lazy. <sighs> like, you know, placing and doing all the things. It's just, yeah, it all takes time. And yeah, you know, if you've been here before, you know I tend to cheat on everything that I can cheat on. 
you know, if I can get by without doing something that I'm supposed to do, I'll do it. It's how I roll. Okay. So, and there we have that blue two-tone, so purple and blue. Smaller blending brushes and or sponge dowers would probably be preferred there. I, again, just grabbed kind of what I had out, so it, it works. We did come in with sponge daubers for class, and they worked really well. I'll probably, I pulled out the green one here, so I'll probably use the green one. Never lined up correctly, my dear. And we're going to pop that one away, and I'll pull back out. I shouldn't have put my green one away. So I'm just using a cheap sponge dauber. These work just as well as, and they work pretty good, just like the blending brushes. It was just a, I only have so many nice, I only have so many makeup style brushes for class. And so, because we were doing multiples on the ink blending this time around, I'm going to move my stencil down a little bit. I see I'm getting a shadow there. It just made for faster, cheaper <laughs> blending than me trying to find. And that way they didn't have to share brushes. I do have, I did buy two stencil sets, so it went, it went pretty quickly. We just moved from one stencil to the next one, and we shared. So, you know, there's three stencils on each set, so there were six stencils, so we were good to roll. It went fairly quickly. And we'll do this one. And I'm just going to do the same thing with this one in those greens. You can definitely go more, you know, do more shading if you have a little mini blending brush. I know I have some, I just don't have them right in front of me at the moment. You can definitely hit it with a darker pigmented ink, maybe towards the stem or one side of the leaf. I like that look. I try to concentrate down towards, you know, where it hits the stem but it's not you can spend as much or as little time as you want when it comes to ink blending through a stencil to get those different looks I don't know how I got so far off on that one but I wiggled that's my story and I'm sticking to it so coming back in you can always come back in and add a second layer of ink and that is going to help darken it Again, and we all know this when we do tone on tone ink blending, right? Okay, so there I have those ones done. So you see the lighter and the darker. All right, where's my third one? Here we go. And let's see. So this one, because it's, I think it's because it's such a small area that. They just couldn't, I don't know. But this one's small and that one's teeny tiny, so I don't understand why they didn't do the stencil the way, the way I would have done the stencil, you know. It is what it is. So to fix that or to kind of, A, I use my finger sometimes. So I'm just, this one is the blue one. So I'm just gonna come in with my blue here and go just to add that blue color on there and then to block it off I'm just going to put a piece of adhesive backed I think that's a real adhesive sheet uh, post-it note would work the mint tape would work washi would work you know anything to kind of cover up the part that you don't want to get ink blended on so for my centers, I'm going to come back in. I think I'm going to do scattered straw. I really like the antique linen on that one, though. Maybe I'll do antique linen instead. I did scattered straw for class, but I think I really like the look of the antique linen. So I'm just going to do another sponge dauber. You could definitely go with another blending brush on this one. A smaller one would be good. Of course, my sponge dauber here probably has a little tiny bit of brown on it yet so we're going to end up with some browner looking centers here oh and that should be green okay so like i said i didn't understand 
some of the, the stencils on this one. Maybe it was just an odd, I don't know. Probably because this line and that line would have been too close on some of them. And that's probably why they did it the way they did it. So they didn't break. I'd, I would guess. That's my guess. Okay. But as long as you're using a small enough blending brush, it's not that big of a deal to kind of fix. That one kind of got a yellowy green, but that's because I messed it up. It is what it is. So for this one, I'm going to line it back up again. And we'll do my green there. And we're going to slip it so I can get the burn, the purpley there in a little bit. back and just hit those little areas that need to be green quick and then I'll switch back to my <coughs> brown slash antique linen. Just kind of hitting that bottom part with the heavier hand and then just filling it in with the other. Open my stencil to make sure that I actually got the whole image color. There we go. Oh, I need to do the purple yet. I need to do the tip. Okay. Okay. There we go. So those ones were easy enough. It's already die cut out, so we just have to pop them out. And ta-da! Right? It's all ready to go. You could definitely just remove the tape from the back. It might be easier. Says the girl that's going to do it the hard way. Anyways. Okay. So I'll set that off to the side. So I have both of mine. They're pretty quick to color and they look pretty. And yeah, I, I enjoyed this card class immensely. I was excited to do this one because it was something different from my normal. All right, I don't think I need, I'm gonna leave those out because if I decide to splatter, I might eat them. So, all right, I have both of those. Now we can bring back in uh, this one here. I need to cut this one out yet because I didn't cut it down to size, I don't think. Let's see, where did I go? I'm just gonna end up hand cutting it maybe. I don't know. Let's see here. Oh okay. wait, let's go with this one. We'll do this one first. So this one I ended up doing. I just all all of these are on plain white card bases. So either the pre-bought ones that you can get at you know your craft store. These are heavier weight from Amazon. I'm not overly impressed with them so I won't tell you what company they're from it was a small store I, we measured and they're not exactly eight and a half inches wide and that's why they scored funny so they have like this little funky line there so as long as you put the little funky over overage to the back they're okay I mean they're not okay but it doesn't mess with my card front it's weird that's all I'm gonna say it's weird I whine about them every time I use them. It's all right. My class whined about them too every time. They're like, ugh. I'm like, yeah, I know. We're using them up. We're getting them gone. It is what it is. Okay. I set those off to the side. And so for this one, this is probably the hardest one to, because it's so lumpy and bumpy on the back. You see all the dimension and stuff on the back. Of course, this side is like flatter or smoother. One of my students went and like rubbed down where the flower was going to go so it would stick. My piece of advice is going to be some heavy duty score style tape. It's, and glue. It's not the easiest one to stick down. So I literally just said, you know what, we're going to do some score style tape because at least then hopefully it will stick. If you have a better way to stick these 3D embossing folder styled cards down, 
or you know pieces down let me know in the comments below i do the liquid glue but i find you need a lot of liquid glue maybe i just i'm not using heavy enough liquid glue to get them to stay like adhering in enough spots or do you just hit it with your glue on the high points i don't know I struggle with see how it's just it doesn't even even the double stick score style super duper heavy duty strong tape is not the greatest I wonder if I put die cut adhesive like the the big the big roll that I have on the back before I run it through if that would make a difference I don't I don't really know but I do double up my adhesive so score style tape and then I do a healthy dose of glue wherever the score tile style tape is not and then of course over the score style tape because I like a little bit of wiggle room to kind of play with here. Do I want them down? I want them up. And so center that on the front of your card panel. So I cut mine down. It is four inches by five and a half inches I do believe on my finished panel here. That's the panel size that I run through the embossing folder with. It might be a little bit smaller by the time it's done running through the embossing folder. So, you know, it is what it is. And for this one, because it's got all that dimension on that double-sided, or on the 3D embossed, we are just going to come in and put this one down with some glue. And then just going over onto the side of this one and then if you have acrylic blocks or something to weigh it down with your misty works that works um, anything that's flat i like to usually weigh it down just a little bit because it gives me that little bit of wiggle room okay now i need to find you get to see some other colored images because i've been busy okay so for this one, I had done some in, I think it was rose gold or gold embossing powder. And then the other was some black options. So if I'm going to go in with some gold on this one, I want to do some gold. I'm going to do some gilded splatter on it just to kind of tie in the gold from there to the gold on the other. It just adds, I don't know, it, it ended up being really pretty. And so when I say we deviate, especially now that we're at my house, I can go and play with, you know, I can go grab stuff if we have ideas as we're, as we're creating. It happens frequently. And so I end up running to my, you know, because we do it at the kitchen table. So I run to the craft room and I'm like, ooh, this will be cool. I think I ended up using the gold for something. I was splattering something. And I used the gold and I was like, ooh, that'd be really pretty with tie in the gold sentiments that I had done. So for this one, you could definitely use that mask, which I probably should have before I got this far. Um, you could have splattered it before you added your flower. That would have maybe been smart too. You know, <clears throat> do as I say, not as I do, obviously. going to add a little bit of splatter there it's probably good enough and then remove that mask I still got a little bit of gold on my image but it's not like a lot and you wouldn't have had to cover it it's you can decide which way you want to go with it if you want the gold on your image if you don't silver or any mica spray like the clear ones are really pretty there too um I think I'm going to go with pretty much the best um i have a lot of note of thanks too they they stole all my birthday ones um i'm gonna do you're pretty much the best and you can either glue this one down and or again pop it up with a little bit of foam adhesive but i'm just gonna do you're pretty much the best here and then for embellishments 
feel free to add glitter glue, um, baubles of any sort and other size. I'm going to come in with some cave crystals from Trinity Stamps. I also have their, the gold rush ones, which I don't think the gold is quite the same. I like to do, maybe do the gold rush ones, but I like this, the gold. It's not the same gold as that one. So I think I'm just going to do the cave crystals. They're clear and iridescent, pretty. And they'll add just a little bit. And I'm not going to overboard it. I'm just going to add a couple on here. And usually I do, you know, the areas of three. So if I didn't like that drop there, I'm going to put one there. Um, one, two, three. I think I'm just going to leave it with three today. I usually over embellish. Today I'm going to try to under embellish. Sounds fun, right? Under embellish. I think the splatter on this one, you probably wouldn't even need the little added things. But So there is that one all complete. Isn't that fun? They're just, they're pretty fast to do that way or you know. So I'm a pop off. Okay, since I didn't have this one pre-cut, I had cut everything else and this one just ended up sticking, I think, to one of my other sheets. So I just ended up running it through the die cut machine quick. I'm using Trinity Stamps Modern Embossed Rectangles. It leaves like a fine embossing on the outside. There's no stitching on these, but a stitched one would have worked as well. And then see how gorgeous that is with those little speckly flecklies. Granted, we're going to cover a lot of this up, but it's just, it's pretty. And you wouldn't have to cover it up. If you didn't want to do that layer of vellum, you could definitely skip it. The other thing with this one is if your panel is kind of wonky, while it's drying, put it under a block, which I did for class. I forgot to do that today. So it's a little wonky. I also ran all of the students through my laminator for my glimmer machine through a piece of parchment paper folded in half and that helps to flatten it as well. So I'm gonna set that there as I get my other piece out here. Peace out. <clears throat> Sounds like I'm leaving, right? Okay, so these ones we did we were careful on the glue like you know it's vellum and it's very thin vellum and where did I go with my vellum sheets I just had them here it's funny how I lose stuff I just had Kate would tell me it is to the right it was actually to the left Kate okay so one of these you can leave all of you know you can leave the garbage in there yet if you want you can pick out all the garbage i'm going to use the one that has the garbage all cleaned out but you know this one i left some of that garbage in and it just adds to the look so for this one it should be semi dry here i'm gonna pull in a magnet just to hold my card down so to do this one i know where my flower my flower is going to go along this edge here. So I've already, you know, I know that's where my flower is going to go on this one. That's kind of where I predetermined it was going to go. I liked following that edge. So I'm going to put glue, obviously, where that flower is going to go. Now you don't have to place your flower first. You can do your that down and then place your flower on top if you so choose. I think for class we placed it and then we put the flower on top. Either way works. And for this one, I'm just gonna do my line of glue there. But I did just little bits in the corner, like super teeny tiny little bits. And then I took my finger and kind of just blotted them out. So they weren't overly large chunks. Hopefully they're mostly dry. And then it will stick, but it's not gonna stick so much that you're going to see it so much does that make sense like I'll hold it down there but it's not it should stick good enough you're gonna have this piece over the top anyway so it's you know 
it's not a huge deal if one of your if it's as long as you don't use too much liquid adhesive and you get a tiny bit of stick on those it shouldn't fold up you know what I'm talking about I don't want it to curl and so I guess that's kind of and this vellum is old how old is it you ask well I might have bought a ream of it for my wedding invitations 20 plus years ago so probably in 20 oh one yeah and I'm still working through said ream you want to know how many sheets are in a ream of vellum like I don't know well over 500 sheets 750 ish I don't know it was open stock and they were like oh we'll just match it up to the ream and they sold it to me that way the joys of a local printing shop yeah I'm pretty sure they were only supposed to sell me in that 250 sheets for a ring of vellum but I didn't know that at the time I found that out later on like huh it's probably why I have all this vellum for for days well shall I say years decades even I could probably even say decades with this one couldn't I so let's see here And this one, I think I popped them up. So yeah, we popped them up for class today. I'm just laying it flat, but feel free to add foam adhesive behind it. It'll add that extra, an extra layer of dimension behind it. Does it need it? I don't know. These ones were just pretty. I didn't, I didn't feel that they really needed a lot of extra. They, you know, they're pretty flowers. And this time I'm going to add in some glitter glue here. So I'm just kind of going to go along where those little dots are. I really think that's kind of where the shading is, where your shadow is, and it just kind of adds a little something. So there's three, you get the three there. I'm gonna come in with, I should probably figure out my sentiment, right? I'm gonna go with a black one this time. I think I'm just gonna do the love you one. Oh, should I show you something that was hilarious? I was having such a hard time stamping. Whoops, okay. So when I did them, see how, let me see if I can get it to actually show up. So on my sending hugs here, there is a little wiggly squiggly line. My hair, you know how you get hair everywhere? Yeah. I ended up getting hair stuck on my stamps while they were in the misty and I couldn't figure out for the longest, for the life of me, what was going wrong with my stamping issues, yeah. <sighs> Sometimes it's the simplest thing, the funniest thing, but the simplest thing. And I'm gonna put that one down there. You could definitely put it there, you could put it over there. I like leaving this open because it kind of lets that watercolored background that we did shine through. You could definitely lay it over the top of your flowers if you laid them flat or you pop it up and you tuck it in and behind. Let's move it in. And then to finish this one, we're going to do just a couple of cave crystals as well. And yeah, if you got glue in the corner and one of them stuck and it looked funny, you could definitely do a embellishment there to help hide it. I'm just going to do a couple throughout here. Not no rhyme and or reason. Kind of doing odd number today. I did five this time. We'll see how it looks when I'm done here. And we might end up coming back in big. I like to variegate my size on these. If you don't have variegated ones, that's fine too. I just like to do some big, some little. Sometimes I go big, mi middle, and little. So yeah, these are probably one of my favorite embellishments from Trinity Stamps. I use them a lot when it comes to if I think it needs just a little something, but I don't want it. I want it to be more subtle. These tend to be fairly subtle. Do I want one way up on top? I think that looks, I think I need one on a petal right there. Do I want a big one, a little one, or middle? We'll go, we'll go middle of the road since I can't decide. Here. 
And there is that one complete. So now for the last one, let me put my embellishments away here. I tend to spill stuff all the time. It's how I roll. And we're gonna pull this one. Okay, so for this one, we can do this part already. So I'm just gonna glue my paper to my card base. You could just go with a colored cardstock for your card base if you so, ch you know, if you prefer doing that. I tend to hoard my colored cardstock because it's not cheap. <laughs> and so, therefore, I usually just cut them down and use them on white paper. And then, because I can't cut straight or my card base is off, I'll just trim off the edge here. So. have any white hanging out. So that part is pretty much done, right? I need to pull in. I just had it. Oh my goodness gracious child. You're a hot mess. Okay. So for this one, I'm bringing in some glue runner, but it's a removable glue runner. And I'm just going to put a couple of dots on the back of that text style paper that's die cut using the die for this one. It is going to give it a small halo. If you don't like that look, you can definitely try to fussy cut it, but it's a lot to fussy cut, especially those other ones. This is like Jamie's lazy fussy cutting okay, or masking. It just gives me a little bit of playtime with the other shall we say like I don't have to worry a whole lot about it so for this one I'm just gonna come in with some stormy sky ink and this is gonna take forever so I'll probably end up switching to um, unicorn blue. so this is Indian corn blue is probably the closest that I have to sky the stormy sky from distress ink wise and of course if you have a big ink you know, I'm just, can I say, I get annoyed with having to re-ink my brush all the time with the little thing. And I am a firm believer in using what you have. So I try not to buy new things if I can get away with using what I have. So, at least when it comes to my inks. I also have full set syndrome, so I think if I'd start collecting them, I'd want them all. I'd, yeah, that would be like expensive. You know who you are. You know what I'm talking about. My goal in life is not to spend all the money on my crafty stuff, right? Save some of it for other stuff, like vacation. I'm in. I just want to bring this out a little bit. I don't have to go all the way to the side. I just want to kind of bring in and add, I don't want to say grounding, but it's kind of like bringing in some grounding. And once I'm done with that, I'm just going to grab a stencil. Any stencil will work. I ended up using like this stencil, I think, the bubble stencil from Tim Holtz. Any of your mixed media style stencils will do. I think we used this one for class two, so we had two options. I like the bubbles. I like the circle. Um, you could go with a little bit bigger circle if that's what you want. I liked the smaller pattern. This would be really cute. You know, when I say use what you have, use what you got. So if you don't have that, you could definitely go. And I think for the one I'm sending Nanny, I cut out this one just from some some paper or some clear adhesive sheet run it through your die cut machine on the with the precision plate and run it through a couple of times it will cut through I think I have it right here it will cut through transparency and so you can make your own stencil pretty easily with that 
And so that's kind of one of those little cheats that I do a lot, especially for classes, because I don't need multiple supplies of something that I'm only going to use once or twice in class. So that's a lot of times what I do, or I'll buy the, a cut plate, you know, more, I'm more likely to buy the die, like an A2 die that I can use for clouds or something and use it as a stencil. So for this one, I just want to add a little bit over the top. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I just kind of want to add a little bit of interest here and there on there, maybe a little bit over here, even the part that maybe I didn't add blue to just to give it, you know, it's, it's a mixed media. You could definitely run some paste through there and give it a little bit of paste. The other thing you can do is spritz it lightly with water. And because I have my other part kind of covered already, I don't have to worry a whole lot about it, you know, bleeding through, but I am going to wipe up the water right away because I don't want it to bleed and re-wet that ink that's behind there. You could also do some splatters. So let's grab some splattery stuff here. We did gold. I want to do white on this one. I just don't feel the gold is what I want for it. So I'm just going to bring in a white shimmer. I'm going to use the aqua pigments. They're already wet. It doesn't take me long to do them. Whoops. As I murder my hand on my camera stand. Probably got the wiggle off of that one, didn't you? Well, it hurt me too. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm just going to come in with that one. Uh, pearlescent watercolor paints, like the dry ones, work for this too. Um, anything that's going to add just a little bit of interest. Feel free to come in with a gel paste over the top. As long as you have your image covered with that little stencil, or the, not really stencil, a little mask, it's going to be fine. Okay, so we'll pull this back out, set that off to the side, go put my hand on ice. I'm just kidding, it's not that bad. It took us. Silly child. So I'm just going to pull this up and see how we have all of all of it going on. It's a single layer. It's flat. This, you can reuse it again if you want, but you know, I pretty, you know, confident that I will have more scrap paper from the printer at some point in time. So this one, all we are going to do, and you can stamp, I think when I did it in, I did it stamped. So we just positioned it and added it on there. I'll probably do that. Let's grab the stamp set here. Ah, that Misty is set up for class next week. So, okay. Well, it's not really set up for class. It's set up for me to prep for class next week. So I'm going to pop this one in there. Actually, well, I'm going to set it there, but I'm going to move it before I, and because I am going to stamp this one, I can use birthday wishes because, you know, I don't have any of those pretty done, cut out. So I'm going to pop it in here. Actually, let's see. Here, do I want it here? Or I could do here. Let's see. We'll see how far over. Okay. So I want to kind of line it up on my misty door on the other side. Because this one is red rubber, two things. I'm going to need to pull out the foam insert. The other thing, don't let your magnets stick together. I am going to bring in, I'll bring my magnets back in here, try not to touch all the sparkly goodness. I'm just going to lay, and actually I'll magnet that down. So to make sure that it's going to be where I want it to be, I put a piece of acetate where it's going to be, and that's where it's going to land. So do I like it there? Do I want to move it up a little bit? I might want to move it up a little bit. So maybe like right there instead. So is it going to be straight? Let's adjust a little bit here. 
you can erase it with your paper towel. Can't do that if you do it on your card already, right? So this way I can just, I don't even have to re-ink it. I can see that it's going to be fairly straight. How straight is that? Well, I can't take it out, so yeah, I think we're good there. So I'm happy with that one. I can remove that sheet. I will clean it off when I'm done here and then I can use it for what it was intended purpose. And there we have, and you can double, you know, if it's in your Misty yet, you can definitely double ink it and stamp it. And it's a nice crisp, clean look. Now with rubber stamps, especially sentiment ones, a Misty is a must have. I do not, <laughs> very, very rarely do I ever hand stamp with a red rubber stamp, at least with words, because your placement is never it's you you can't see what you're stamping so therefore even if it's printed on top sometimes it's not always a hundred percent foolproof and so i would definitely encourage you to get either a misty or a stamp plant form of some type some type there are cheaper versions than a misty out there so that's you know definitely an option and then for this one I am not going to, I think we'll just glue it flat. You could definitely put foam adhesive on the back of this one and just pop up that whole panel if you so, you know, because it's, it's a fairly flat, it's a flat lay one layer card. So you could definitely add a little bit of dimension there and not have to worry a whole lot about adding too much weight for postage wise. This one will mail super super well because it is so flat. Oh look, Jamie had black little marks on her fingers. I love when I do that. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I just used it the other day. I was looking for my sand eraser. So I'll just sand erase that off there and call it good. It'll be fine. The other thing I can do is bring this back in and, you know, add a little bit of ink. Nobody will ever know. I probably should have masked that off. It's all good. So maybe if I can get it to sit. Where's that? Okay. So there's the block. All right. There we go. So that is all three of them that we did for our card class in February. So if you haven't picked up the, you know, florals with the coordinating stencils and die cuts, they're fun to play with. I think you can make a lot of cards really fast with them and you can do a lot of different techniques with them. They're not cheap though. Um, I will say that I did pick them up on sale and I want to say because, well, I bought two stencils, but the stencils were the cheap part. They were still probably $55 to get the set, which was fine. Cause you know, class wise covered that cost for me. It didn't really cover anything else, but it at least covered the cost of it. So I think if it's something that you want to try, look for them on sale. Um, if you have crafty friends that like to play switch and swatch stuff, that would be a fun way to try them out too. So, oh, well, these ones are all three of them that I did for my samples, right? So this was the one we did today. This is the one I did as my prep. And this was the one I did in class. So you see, there's a pretty wide range and I still used a lot of the same. I used almost all of the same things on all of them. Yeah. So we have, was this one today's? Um, no, this one was my class. This one was my sample. Now this one was my class one and this one is the one I did with you today I will do we'll do it for all three of these right so this one is my one we did today I can tell because it's still wet this one was my class one and this one was my sample so you know I have nine cards pretty fast and easy for all of them once you have kind of like your idea done cut out and ready to go it's pretty it was fun to, to play with the mixed media aspect of it and all of the things so 
um, definitely, you know, you don't need this stamp set to do it. Anything with a floral, anything that's big and bulky like that, you can do something along that line. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you like these, please let me know. I will continue to do them. If it's not your thing, that's okay too. Let me know in the comments below. I am willing to maybe do some voiced over faster versions. So I will see if I can get that one done for this one sometime in the next week. Um, voiceovers tend to take me a long time editing and such. So I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye.